Today we're going to build this very DIY children's bookcase library piece on four eyes. Now, this piece is a pretty straightforward, simple build. And all you would need to get it done is a circular saw or a track saw and a drill. To make it a little faster and cleaner though, I'm going to be using the Craig ACS for all of my cuts, which you can kind of think of as a track saw on top of a table, and a Craig K5 pocket hole system so that I can keep all of my screws hidden. And if you want to see free plans for this project, make sure to check out the link in the description below. And also, if you're wondering why I'm not in my shop for this build, it's because we built this at the Craig booth at this year's Workbench conference. Now, so far, all I've been doing is very roughly breaking down my plywood and removing some factory edges. And once that was out of the way, the first, or I guess next step, was to set a stop at 46 and a half inches, and I'm gonna use that to cut a couple of my sheets to their finished length. And from those sheets, I'm gonna get basically every piece that runs this way, which is gonna determine the overall width of the bookshelf, which is gonna be 48 inches. So here I'm ripping a bunch of those 46 and a half inch pieces to their finished widths. So from this sheet, for example, I'm going to get three shelf back pieces at nine and five eighths inches, two shelf bottom pieces at just over three inches, one thin strip for a front ledge at basically a half of an inch, and finally a third bottom piece that we're going to leave wide for now because it's going to need a bevel on it. Next, I'm gonna set my fence at 14 and a quarter inches and cut out what's gonna be my box bottom piece, I guess you'd call it. Okay, so in this shot, I'm tilting the saw blade to five degrees to cut the bevels on both sides of my bottom shelf and the back edge of my top shelf bottom. So basically, one should be a parallelogram and one should be this shape, which is, I guess, just a quadrilateral where these two edges are 90 degrees, and this one has one corner at 95 and one corner at 85 degrees. And that's so that the pieces will sit flush with the back panel, and it'll give the shelves that desired lean so that the books don't want to tip forward. Next, we're going to take another one of our sheets, which is going to give us our two vertical side pieces and our two vertical partitions. And we'll start off again by removing the factory edge and then cutting them into strips that are 15 inches wide. After that, we're going to set our stop at 44 inches and cut both of our vertical partitions to their finished height and our back panel to its finished height. Now, for the side pieces, we want this angle lopped off of the front top corner. So to do that, I'm going to measure up 21 and a half inches from the bottom and four and a half inches from the back. Then just draw a quick line to connect those two points. Then, since we want them to be identical, I'm going to set the saw to plunge an inch and a half deep and clamp the two pieces together and cut them at the same time. Just like the side pieces, we need to cut a 5 degree angle off of the top edge of the vertical partitions, so again we're going to batch cut these. Okay, now at this point, everything is cut to its finished size, and we can start drilling in all of our pocket holes that we need for assembly. So here's where they're all going to go. First, each of these shelf bottoms are going to get four pocket holes along the edge to attach them to their corresponding shelf backs. Next, each of the shelf backs are going to get three along the sides, or ends I guess, which are going to attach to the vertical shelf side pieces. The underside of the bottom piece is also going to get three along the end to attach to the vertical side pieces. And finally, the back is going to get five going up each edge to attach to the side pieces. In addition to that, from the underside, we're going to put two screws going from the bottom panel into each of the vertical partitions, as well as two screws going from the bottom shelf into the vertical partitions from the top. And I think that was everything. But you do still have to pay attention to the order in which you assemble everything, that way you have access to it. 
So we're gonna start off by marking a line two inches down from the top on each of the shelf back pieces. And we'll use that line to mark and determine where we're gonna attach our shelf bottom pieces to the shelf back pieces. Then we can clamp and screw them together. Next, we can take those sub-assemblies and put together this sort of staircase-shaped piece, which is all of the shelf back and bottom pieces, except for the very bottom shelf piece. After that, we'll attach our vertical partitions to our bottom panel, again, by using normal screws that go up from the underside. And after that, we can attach our bottom panel to our side pieces. And to do this, we'll just use some really long clamps to hold everything while we attach our pocket screws and just keep everything aligned nicely. So at this point, we have a piece that looks like this. Okay, next we can attach our bottom shelf, again by drilling and screwing from above the bottom shelf and into the vertical partitions. And these are gonna be hidden since they're gonna be behind the lowest shelf back. And speaking of that, the next step was to install that entire staircase sub-assembly using all the pre-drilled pocket holes. Finally, we could install the back and then the whole thing was together. And as long as you have the back against the wall, there isn't a screw that you can see. And by the way, the back should be against the wall because you're gonna wanna anchor this thing to a stud to prevent it from tipping over in case kids wanna climb on it or pull on it or whatever. Actually, one more thing. I guess I lied when I said that we didn't use any glue because we do need to glue on this little front ledge and that's just for the books on the front shelf so that they don't slide forward. And it's probably not necessary, but can't hurt. From there, I'd recommend sanding all of the sharp corners just to make them a little bit rounded over. That way, if kids bump into them, they don't hurt or cut, and then you can just put on any finish of your choice. And that's it. So filming and building this project in front of people on a convention floor definitely wasn't the easiest, but in the comfort of your own home, I really do think this is a pretty simple project that most people could tackle. And it's useful and doesn't take up too much floor space. So again, if you're interested, click on the link in the description to view the written article, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching, and 